All right, guys, how you doing? Uh, this is Hiram. I know I haven't been post posting videos in a long time, but I was not going to film this. I just tore down a 6L80, and I have it over here on the side. I just tore it down right now, and this is a 8L90. I don't know the guy that built this transmission, but, uh, I mean, I was asked for help. He has a dealer valve body on it. He has a dealer torque converter. It's been reflashed, reprogrammed. And there's some issues with it and I just took the pen off the first thing that I do I, I take the front cover off you know and then uh, undo the chain that turns the pump uh, so I'm already at this point here but then I saw something I just I barely just pulled the pan and I said well let me grab my camera and because so I have the camera with me and I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna go in here and we're gonna see where all this stuff is coming from let me get the camera closer you can see we got some brass material right there we got teeth right there those teeth they look like friction teeth teeth off of friction I think I'm be, I, I, I'm thinking I'm not sure don't take my word for it but I'm thinking that this transmission was misassembled somehow it is kind of tricky the first one uh, the first 8l90 that i did i was having an issue with the fiber washer and i'll show you which one it is in the front like right here in the midsection and uh i know that the manual says to build it one way and another it just manuals don't work for me i i, I develop my own strategies to uh uh to disassemble and assemble transmissions and we're gonna try and correct the issue. Supposedly this transmission is built. See, I got three more teeth here. I got black gloves. I don't have the orange ones, but I got three more. This looked like friction tooth. And the ones that have the triangular uh, teeth like this, they go in the back section somewhere back here. So yeah, we have a lot of stuff in there. I was not expecting to see this, but I mean, I guess let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to flip it over to the front just so you can see. It takes a gasket for the front cover and then he has the chain. He has a chain that turns the pump. The pump is part of the valve body. So this is a dealer valve body. It's a brand new valve body. And this truck has not been delivered to the customer. So... These guys, they pulled it out twice already, and supposedly it's been worked on twice. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not. Uh, I mean, I have no clue. I don't know the guy. So, uh, I mean, they just called me and asked me for help. And the guys from the shop, they hired somebody to build it, you know, because their builder he's uh, out of town. So uh, now I got it. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. So this cover right here. Uh, it what you would say is a stator, you know, it's got 13 millimeter bolts and then he has He has a guide pin somewhere uh, We'll go ahead and tear it down in a minute, but first let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and remove this valve body So this is it's a 2018 uh, Chevrolet Silverado 2018 and yes We do a lot of them. We get them a lot. So we have the internal mode switch or the rain sensor here and what I'm gonna do here, am I, uh, is he, well, he, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. It's been a while, it's been like a year having posted a video or made a video or whatever. I've been very super, super busy. And with the pandemic and all that stuff, I mean, things got a little bit weird. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo the, the linkage. I'm gonna take this uh, eight millimeter bolt right there, remove it. I'm gonna put it in the, in a little basket I mean I know that for training videos or whatever you know it's good to show you know how to put them in order and all that stuff but hey uh, I just want you to take a ride with me and uh, see what's up with this thing I'm curious I'm curious and I'm, I'm pretty sure you are too all right so let's go ahead and uh, undo the harness here so this is a main harness you undo it from here and the speed sensors they stay in the case 
and this main harness comes with the valve body and it stays on the valve body and you got to undo it from the rain, uh, rain sensor or the internal mode switch uh, because this is part of the linkage here of the parking mechanism all right so the the sockets of the bolts that we're going to remove are the same socket that you use for the 6L80s you know the 6L80s I think I need to do more videos on the 6L80s there's some interesting stuff going on with those things all right so let's go ahead and uh, remove all these uh, bolts I mean you, they're, they're, you can't go wrong they're all eights and then uh, a couple of seven millimeters and then you have these and to remove the valve body that's all you do just remove this big plug and all those bolts as many bolts as you can find there's one underneath here that sometimes I have to undo this uh, thing but you can just move it to the side and get that out and there's another one down here hidden and once you get most of them out or all of them out it should just boop it'll, it'll pop out and it's not popping out but let's go ahead and remove all the bolts get this bolts out of the way that one out that one out this is the temp sensor uh, and I'm sorry if I if my head gets in the way but I need to look there's one more right here get this one over here come here all right let's get this one off and, and boop, it already slid down a little bit all right so this is a brand new valve body from the dealership from GM and it comes out just like that. That's how you remove a valve body for a 8L90. That's the fluid pump. It's integral, integral to the valve body itself. When you get a valve body from the dealership like this, this number right here, you have to program it to the vehicle. And all these solenoids, the, the, the pull whisk modulated solenoids, are flow tested they got their own flow characteristics you cannot swap them you cannot mix them up because they are flow tested uh, and programmed to their respective position so whenever you get a valve body like this you're gonna get a little sticker and you're gonna this number right here uh, you're gonna get the uh, if you do programming in-house then you input that number right there this is a it's called a ton T-U-N. No, no, this is a pun. A P-U-N. A park unique identifier. Or unique number. Part, a part unique number. And the transmission has another number stamped on it. When you get the whole transmission, you have to program that number to the computer. And that is called the ton number. Transmission unique number. So... Whenever you do swaps like this, I mean, uh, you get one from the dealer, or you get one from the wrecking yard or whatever, you cannot just put it there and expect, expect it to work. You have to uh, program it. Now, if you don't know, if you get a unit, if you don't know, uh, you program the, the ton number from the, from the transmission and you have some issues and you pull the pan and you get this number because you don't know if the valve body has been replaced. So once you do that, you have issues, then you pull the pan, you get this, and then you program that to the truck. And uh, if that works fine, then there you go. If not, then you have internal problems. As you can see, I, I can see more teeth right here. So I'm thinking that the, the frictions here in this section are the ones that shed in the, the teeth. Because I got two more right here. Got two more. One and two. Two more. all right and i know that the designation for the clutch packs and all that you know the one two three four uh five six seven eight uh two nine eight or whatever it gets kind of confusing after a while but i mean you'll get used to all that mumbo jumbo all right so i'm gonna just gonna take the speed sensors off and there's a connector right here that i can just uh, undo and just undo the speed sensors and what I like to do, so I won't lose my bolts, I like to just, they stay there like that. I just want to drive them back in them. And they are, they have an alignment 
uh, dowel. It's plastic. You know, they have an alignment dowel there that aligns it to the case, and the bolt doesn't come out. It's the bolt stays there. It has. I, I'm not sure if it's got like an O-ring or something on the right here on on, the, on that thing. And the bolt just stays there. I mean, I just instead of having it out, it'll fall out. You might lose it. I mean, I just drive it back in there like that. All right, let's go ahead and take this seal off. These seals, we have a center support there, and uh, you gotta apply these frictions here. We'll talk about the frictions later. Um, uh, once I get the parts and everything, I might do a part two on this thing, or I might not. I mean, for shits and giggles, I mean, this, this is just gonna be to find out, to pique our curiosity. That's what we're doing here. So I'm gonna take the half portion off through the front, and then I'm gonna take the uh, parking mechanism off because if I don't take the parking mechanism off, the rear section won't come out. And I assemble it through the back first and then through the front and this, I'll, I'll show you, I'll, I'll show you that. Well, I'm saying I, I'll show you, but I, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. These are 13 millimeters. Go ahead and take these out. I'm not sure if this thing was completely overhauled, but what I do know, it's a, that the valve body, it is a dealer valve body. Okay, here is good. Okay, let's talk about this thing, this bearing. I was having an issue one time that this thing didn't want it, we, we, I had a gap and it did not want it to close. I took it apart like three times and I'm like, man, all my bearings are good. But they weren't because this bearing right here has a lip. And I had this, how did I have this? I had this backwards like this. Some, somehow, or that, or there, or something. I can't remember. But it was backwards. So the lips, the lip on this bearing, it holds the, uh, the spacer. And it normally goes like this, you know, the, the spacer goes on the drum and then the bearing or the bearing sits like that. But I mean, usually uh, I assemble it over here. I just paste it over there. I don't paste it over here, but that's the way it is. The lips goes towards that spacer. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I almost broke that thing too. All right, so we take this drum out, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this bearing over here. We got some frictions here. Let's go ahead and look at the friction. Oh, what was that? Oh, no, that, that was on the magnet over here. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the frictions from here. There is a, uh, a tab here, and it's just there, the snap ring opening. You know, you cannot misplace that. If you want to mark it, you can mark it. And it's dirty, man. I don't know. I, I have no clue, man. It might not, it might not have been. I, I don't know. Clutches are good. They're in good shape. See how they are triangular in shape. These are good. Put them here. Put him to the side. Let me get this thing out of the way. All right. I'm not sure if you can hear me or not because the compressor just came on. There's the bearing and another spacer here. Oh, it's broken. This thing's broken, or what is that? Oh, no, 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 it was just dirty. So the spacer goes in the drum, and then the bearing has a little lip, right here. That lip, he holds right there on that edge on the drum, like that. That's the way it holds itself. And this, if you've never seen one of these, it looks like a 4L60 drum, right? And the shaft is on the wrong, the shaft's on the wrong side. 
All right. I, I, I'd say I'm going to put this to the side because I don't have a lot of room here on the bench. I'm going to put this to the side and then we'll come back and then we'll disassemble this. I'm going to put that to the side. But for now, let's go ahead and get everything out. Let's, let's find out what's up with this thing. So we have a hub here and a bearing. I'm just going to start laying the parts in there to make a little bit of room. There's a bearing that goes on this planet. Oh, what the what? I'm not liking this. That thing seized, this is seized on that thing. It's seized on that shaft. Yeah. See the bearing, the bearing is there. So we're missing a bearing further in there that is pushing that shaft there and the splines are not letting me get that planet out. All right, so, and this usually come out, comes out like that. And you, this big sun, sun gear right here where the, the, it has a planet, that's where the fiber washer is. And I bet you that washer is the one that, let me see if I can get that thing out. This planet, we're gonna have to replace something here. We got hard parts already. It's kind of hard to uh, to hammer on this thing because the splines are damaged. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. Let's go ahead and take take everything from the from the back. I usually go this way until the, the uh, after the center support. I get all the frictions out. It's easier for me to assemble it from this side. All right, Valbody, you get over there. All right, go ahead and take this off. You need to go over there for now. All right. Come here. Uh, these are the same bolts as the front cover. See, I grab a bolt from the front cover and they're exactly the same. So you can just drop it in there, mix it, no problem, no big deal. Nothing going hidden, man. And this is 15. I'm still going to need to figure out how to get that thing out. And I might put you guys in pause for a minute and try to get that thing off. And then we go from there. Let me get a piece of wood. Raise this thing up a little bit. All right. Ooh, things are coming out this way too. All right, what we got here? Something's damaged back here. This bearing is good, but uh, This piece right here has a, a, a lip that holds the bearing in place. It's gone. It's gone because the planet, somehow it's rubbing on that thing. And this goes, why would that be rubbing there? If the bearing is here, unless he forgot the bearing at first, he drove it the second time around, he put the bearing where it belongs. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out, see what happened here. Let's go ahead and take this planet off if it comes out, because I don't think it's going to come out. And it ain't going to come out. This, one's, this is the one that has the hub that goes all the way up. Take this, you know, more pieces coming off. One of one of the friction, one of the clutch packs, the teeth are gone. Gas molded gasket. All right, guys, I'm gonna put you on hold right now. I'm gonna put you on pause. I gotta figure out how to split this thing, and then I'll come back. I think I'm gonna get my. Uh, if I can get my fingers. 
my puller in there. So we already got some damage here on the, on the on that piston. Yeah. Hold that thought. I'll be right back. All right, guys. I think we got some so, some success here. Had to put my uh, jaw puller here, uh, socket, and and there we go. So I got to plan it out. Plan it's out. I have to use this socket here. The planet looks all right. The splines all right. So this, this goes in here. Yeah, the planet looks good. It looks a little bit overheated for some reason. That goes here. This goes in here. This is the bearing I was talking to you about that has a fiber washer and the fiber washer looks in good shape. What happened here? Okay, let me get this big, sun gear or sun some planet off so here is the fiber uh, washer it's in good shape it's not broken and this is the one that I was telling you about that splines in here and I assemble it I assemble the rear section first until that snap ring and then I put the transmission on the side and then I just shove everything in there if I have time First, we're going to need to get the parts. This goes here. Let's check. Look at that. Yeah, something was misassembled in the rear section. Washer's melted. Washer is melted. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's continue with this thing. Let's get this thing out of the way over here. Oh, let's see. Can I go zoom in? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Right there. All right. Let's go ahead and take this. And, of course, you get your long screwdriver with a special hook. And I, I think the problem is going to be in the back, se back section somehow. Somehow. Like the uh, 41Ts, you know, like the 604s, you know, you have a center support like this with the return spring. You have a alignment. You have a, a wavy, which the wavy always goes towards the piston. If you guys know that, if you've been listening, let's go ahead and inspect this part. Ooh. Look at this. Look at that, man. Look at that, man. It's mixing the bearing that goes there. Take this frictions out. Frictions are in good shape. Oh, and the problem with these units, the problem with these units is that they have a shutter. The torque converter shutters through all eight gears. It uh, it comes on in second. Actually, it comes on in first. The torque converter comes on in first. And I've tuned this uh, 8L90s to where I put the... Uh, I put the lock up in the higher gears uh, from four, five, six, seven, eight. Go ahead and take all this, all this out. Okay. So this thing is missing the bearing that goes here. So this is the clutch pack that's damaged. We got two frictions out.
we got uh, someone ate too many candies, too much candies in their life and lost their teeth. Look at that. Look at that one. That one's bent. So being bent like that, whoo, man, I can already tell. So that friction, it's missing its teeth. And we're missing a bearing here. So I'm gonna need that, those pieces. I'm gonna need this piece, this piece with its bearing. This one has its bearing. All right. So there's no problem here on this one. See how he's got the bearing here. This one is it's missing it. It goes right here. It goes right here. I have I have the book on I have the ATSG book on, on for this one, but it's a, it's a digital copy. Oh man, we're gonna need this one too because this is the reluctor for a speed sensor. It's all chewed up, all in the back, all chewed up. So basically that, that bottom, the bottom friction was against it. And this is what cut the teeth on the friction. The friction doesn't go, go here. And that's because of that bearing. So I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need all them parts. So I'm gonna need those frictions. I'm gonna need this piece. And these two pieces here. So I'm gonna put these to the side because I, I gotta take this to uh to that transmission shop. So we'll, they can get this here, frictions. And and this planet here is damaged from here from the tip and is damaged from down here on the reluctor. Now the parts look okay where this where this hub works. So let's go ahead and put this to the side and there's nothing in there. You can see through. There's nothing in there anymore. Everything's out. All you got here is just the uh, uh, Rain sensor or internal mode switch. Oh, I'm gonna need this fuck this washer right here. Ooh man. Hope the dealer sells this because the aftermarket doesn't. If not, I know the guy that sells hard parts and they have a lot of units of these, but he's gonna want to sell the whole thing just for a washer. So you got you guys gotta be careful with that. Now this part back here, I'm gonna take it anyways. I'm gonna tell them guys, hey man. Hey man, gotta get that thing, man. This can still be used. Cause that only centers the bearing there. And I I think I think not, man. I, I, I think we need to replace it because that that's what centers the bearing here. And in, in if you if this piece goes in here, and if it's not centered, check this out. It's gonna be just flopping around. It's gonna cause some issues. So, yep, I'm gonna need that piece as well. Man, oh man, the list is getting bigger. It's gonna get more more expensive, man. More expensive, man. All right. All right. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and put all these things on the side. I'll put this on a little box or something. So I'm taking all that. I'm gonna give that to them. I'm gonna go ahead and take a good friction so he can get the whole the the whole frictions for this so this is the 8l90 transmission off of a 2018 or 2019 chevrolet silverado and they probably i'm assuming they probably got it for a shutter and they went ahead and built the thing and whoever did this thing for them unfortunately they dropped the ball somewhere frictions these frictions are good. Has a little crown. It has a little guide pin, and that guide pin, the piston, has uh, has the guide the guide pin for it for those frictions. 
we'll talk about the once I get the parts we'll talk about a little bit of a I'll have my laptop open with the with the manual we'll talk about what what the freaking are they're in good shape okay I think that's gonna be it I mean I think that's gonna be it for this video and I had fun I hope you had fun watching this as much as I did and whoo man I was not expecting all that carnage on this 8L90. They're very simple to build. The only issue is just the valve bodies, you know, and shutters and, but assembly, assembly wise, it's just the transmission. Just the 4L60 that decided to have the shaft on the opposite side of the drum. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Part two? Part two? Yeah, part two. All right. Part two then. All right, guys. Well, this is not part two. I'm gonna. I was gonna separate the videos, but uh, there's some good news and some bad news. They cannot get this piece. They cannot find it right now, so far. And I need the bench, but they did find some uh, the other stuff. Now, the stuff that they got is from uh, our hard parts supplier, and it came out of a four-wheel drive unit, which is exactly the same and they throw this in here because of the four wheel four wheel drive unit uh this is different uh and they send me another bearing thinking that you know the bearing would be centered on the uh output shaft which as you see it does not the center the 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 output bearing centers on the extension house in itself it has a little bit of lip left over down here and I mean I can make it stay and that's the way it, it's supposed to be all the way around that's the way it should be uh, so what we're gonna do and you can see the clutch so uh, they send they send me that one friction that's bent so what they want right now is uh, put this transmission back together uh, with the parts that were sent uh, just to get just to get this thing out of the way while they find this and I think they're gonna get another unit and that other unit uh, is supposed to be a known good so what they're gonna do uh, they're probably gonna tear it down and put an overhaul kit on it uh, supposedly it's all good so we're just gonna freshen it up with all the paper rubber rings and seals uh, no clutches because it's supposed to be a known good don't going down the road unit but they are going to install the the, that valve body the reason being is that that valve body is already programmed to the truck so uh the 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 uh, tun number on the case is going to be ignored because all the shifting characteristics is going to be done through the valve body uh just so that you guys can understand uh my frame of thought and uh what's going on with this thing and uh how are you going to do it uh so, I got all the parts that were damaged right here. We're reusing the same output shaft. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm going to have an extra bearing left over. And here are the parts that were... Remember I told you that there's a bearing that goes in between here? You know, when I tore it down? Uh, and here are the parts. So, this is the replacement part that's going to go in this unit. Now, to replace this thing, all we have to do is just flip it upside down, remove the linkage, and uh, it should be able to uh, remove and install whenever they get this piece. Uh, I'm thinking that I'm probably going to end up putting the valve body that's going to come from that other unit and put it on this unit uh, so that they can have this unit as a core. And it's going to be basically a going down the road unit, you know, once that other valve body gets programmed. To this one or they get a dealer one and get put on this one and get programmed for the next vehicle vehicle coming up and here is the bearing that was missing on that one so with this bearing all the the rear section will be flopping back and forth back and forth and uh causing whatever damage was caused to that uh uh to that friction and uh, here's the replacement planet. Actually, this planet was good. There was nothing wrong with this planet. But this planet was no good. 
So this is the replacement part. I just had it assembled there, but there's a bearing that goes here. As you can see, there's a bearing that goes there. Nothing goes down here because the other bearing goes in here, goes on here. And then you have a capture bearing for this sun gear. And then you have a bearing with the lip that the lip goes towards the sun gear. And then your output shaft and then the output bearing. All right. You guys with me so far? I hope you are. I'm going to hang the unit here because it's kind of a, it's going to be kind of high for me, you know, kind of like, or I could put it on a uh, torque flight case. I mean, it don't, it don't matter. Uh, we're going to assemble it from, we're, I'm going to install this and we're going to assemble everything just like you would a 6L80 or 4L60 through the barrel of the case. Like I, like I mentioned when I was staring on this unit, the book calls for assembly on both sides. And I don't know, I tried that and <laughs> I mean, I got my own ways of doing things and I figure out the best and more efficient way for myself. You don't have to do it the way I do it. I'm just going to tell you the way that it's easier for me to do. Uh, and that's the method I'm going to show you today. And then I'm going to lay the transmission on the side where actually we're going to hang it here and we're going to rotate it to the side and we're going to stuff these two drums together boop, so that our a uh, fiber washer that goes here doesn't fall off because it, it, it guides itself on on the splines right here and so you spline the fiber washer and then you put the the, the bearing on top and when you're doing it like like this standing up the it doesn't like to sit properly and whenever you try to assemble this the this falls off it's just a, it's, it's a mess it's it's a <laughs> it's a mess so if you want to follow the book follow the book you're gonna be surprised the way I'm gonna put this thing together it's, it's fairly simple it's fairly simple uh, and it's gonna be I mean maybe uh, now there's a lot of transmission rebuilders that watch my channel and you guys that are builders are gonna say well shit up I, I mean I assemble mine the same way you do you know, but there's some other people who are armchair technician, technicians out there that never touch one of these, but they know everything about them, you know, in the comfort of their armchairs. Uh, they want to do it by the book. And whenever you don't have one of these and you've never done it, I mean, uh, it's just, uh, it doesn't apply in other words. So I tried the book. It didn't work for me. So we're going to do it my way. All right, so uh, I'm going to put the, once the other case, because uh, I have a 6L80 and I got to do that first, but I need my bench. So I'm putting this back together. I'm going to waste my time, in other words, to film this, because I would really like to get the other one first before this, but I need my bench to put my stuff over here. And I build on that other bench. I don't put oil on that other bench or nothing like that. So, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to pause you guys. I'm going to put this in the cooker uh, so I won't be leaking all that fluid on the floor. And uh, we're just going to put it back together. Put it back together and and then I'll work on the next one. But the next one, you're not going to see that. I'm not filming that. Alrighty guys, let me get everything set up. All right, guys, so we're just going to assemble this as it is. Nothing's going to be washed or clean or anything. It's just going to be put back together. Uh, so they can have this unit back. And it's going to be their decision if they want to use it again. Uh, as it is, but it's not dirty. It's, uh, like I said, I, it's, they claim it's been built before. So I have no clue. Uh, it doesn't seem like it to me, but... I mean, it is what it is. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to put the, we're going to install the extension housing on it. As it is, I turn my fan on. I think I'm going to have to turn it back on because it's getting a little bit warm in here. Uh, and I turn it off because of uh, 
some of you guys think that it's kind of a little bit noisy and I mean I get you it is uh, so I'm gonna have to probably speak a little bit louder over it all right I'm gonna put you guys on pause because uh, I'm gonna flip this thing over and then we're gonna start assembling everything from the from the barrel of the case just like you would any other transmission instead of doing it like what the book says from the from the back and then from the front uh i mean that's just the way i do it it might be easier the other way i don't know i mean i tried it once i didn't like it uh i mean it's easier for me like this and uh i'm gonna stick with it all right let me uh reposition yourself and uh this thing and uh we'll get back at it man all right guys well i'm upside down because I usually am where the camera is at, but I got my parts on this other bench. And usually uh, I have my camera on this side and I have my parts on the other bench where I, where I built. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna install the output shaft and just kind of eyeball it there, kind of center it. Like I said, they're gonna take care of that now. We're gonna get, uh, I got my green goo already uh, ready. I'm just gonna get my output shaft, uh, my sun gear. And I'm just gonna lay it down here. Then I'm gonna put together this pieces right here. So, so I'm gonna put the rear planet and then the middle planet or the, the following planet on top of it. It's kind of hard to do it right here. And then I'm gonna install this piece right here and we're gonna install it down there as a set. I don't wanna put the other piece here yet because we're gonna install, I don't remember what these are called. I think these are one, two, three, four, five reverse. Uh, and these are the ones that were the one that that one friction was all chewed up ate too much candy and their teeth fell off so we're gonna lower this thing into the sun gear down there and it will engage the output shaft and I got my other hand holding the output shaft and I'm already engaged all right now the next clutches, the ones that had were, were damaged. So just remember that the wavy goes towards the piston, the pressure plate goes always away from the piston, and then your snap ring. So here, now I'm upside down here, so uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky for me to align the uh, the tabs on the. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm upside down, I'm backwards. You guys are in my spot. Let me see if I can get this thing. Okay, so there we go. The wavy, one steel. I have a used friction here that they sent just to close it. And then they want to install the, the rest of the original frictions that came out of it. And If they want to use it, like I said, they, they can just uh, flip it upside down and remove the extension housing and install the other extension housing on it. No big deal. All right. And then our snap ring. Just like that. Or you can do it on the 12 o'clock position. It don't matter. I mean, I know the book calls it. I can't remember what he said, but I don't think it's really that important. Not on this one, or at least. So, now, as you remember, that other piece didn't have this bearing. And then this bushing got all laid up. Now we're gonna install this piece right here. And we're going to install the next set of frictions. Now, the pressure plate is going to go down first because the piston is going to be on the opposite side. 
And I don't remember which are these. They, they were one, two, three, four or something. Uh, but one of you arm, armchair technicians, I mean, you can comment down there and, and just uh, say what it is. Put the timestamp on it and just uh, say what it is, man. I mean, you guys are good at doing that. You know, try to correct everything. So there you go. There's your opportunity. Anyways, uh, we continue. Uh, we started with the pressure plate and then friction. And then we're going to... We're going to finish with a, a steel plate. And this one has, the teeth are kind of different. They're not as the, like the, uh, like the steels. So it's going to take a couple of tries to get this thing on there. Come on now. It didn't want to fall there. It's going to be, how's it going to be? Right there? Yeah, right there. Now the wavy. Now the uh, retainer guide. The return spring. Like that. And it has to be, the, co the conical stuff has to come up against the piston itself. And then you have your apply hole here that's going to go to the uh, 6 o'clock position. But it also has, no, wait a minute, where's the apply hole at? Apply hole is down here. That's gonna, gonna that's the bleed hole. Well, there's nothing there. And then he has a tab, an alignment tab. Okay, it's right here. The alignment tab goes gonna go down here. And as you can see, well, you cannot see it because uh, the way the camera is at. But this groove right here is wide at the top, and then it tapers, it tapers down. It helps you kind of slide this thing down there. Some of you guys probably never noticed that. But that's what it is for. It's for ease of assembly. And we're going to install this snap ring. And it's almost there. And then you get your uh, snap ring compressor or your uh, return spring compressor. Compress that and install the snap ring. And let me get, just get that tool out. There we go. That's my uh, snap ring compressor. And it's already in. I've already compressed the snap ring. And it just falls right in. It's that easy. You don't need a compressor, by the way. Uh, so now we have that installed. And now we're going to go sideways. Now we're going to go sideways because uh, when I install this piece right there let's go ahead and install the fiber washer what what did I do with that fiber washer let's get our green goo going so we're going to put green goo all the way all around that those splines right there the splines where I told you where the fiber washer goes we want to make sure that that thing don't go anywhere we want that thing to stay still stay put don't go anywhere. We got this thing halfway there. Now, see the way it is? The little step and the flat side goes up. And then you have you have the, the splines or the little alignment grooves right here. And as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and put some uh, green goo all the way around just to make sure that this thing does not go anywhere like that the flat side goes up and this is gonna sit on that snap ring on that piece over there it's down here all right align it align it good on the splines you have to make sure that it goes in the splines the splines are going to protrude a little bit above it. Then we're going to get this. Uh, this one has a, a lip right there where it bottoms out on that piece on the, on the top of the splines. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put green goo on that one too. 
Just like that. Green goo. I'm gonna put some green goo. Gringo! Come on the gringo! Some green goo. The green assembly goo. Alright. Now that we have this thing like that, we can go ahead and assemble our drum. Because it's all disassembled right now. And then we're going to go put this thing sideways and we're going to bloop, install that thing on there. Install our, our uh, front cover, or our not the front cover, but the, the, the support, the front cover support, or the stator support on it. Bolt it up, front cover, gasket, front cover. We're done with this thing. It's easy, man. It's, it's that simple. All right, let me bring the camera up here to the bench. And let's go ahead and start assembling this thing. It's gonna be kind of tricky because uh, nothing is washed and it's full of fluid and uh, the bearings and washers are gonna kind of want to fall off and stuff. But I mean, it is what it is. I need to get this thing away from here and uh, work on the next one that comes in. I'm, I might film the ins installation of all the rubber pieces on all the drums and all that stuff. I mean, but that's for another video. Let me get you uh, on this bench over here and uh, and we'll continue. All right, so these, these, these uh, spacer and the baron, they go on the opposite side. Let's go ahead and uh, start assembling this thing. And the first thing that goes in here, it's going to be this. Wait a minute, where's everything at? Okay, so it's this piece right here. He has a bushing and it aligns, aligns itself. And we are going to install this frictions in here. And we've got to make sure that they align pretty good. There you go, it's, it's aligning. And now the frictions. Wait a minute, these are not going. We install that first. We install the frictions and the steels first, and then wiggle that thing in there. We do the wiggle, wiggle. That's why. That's why uh, I was saying that assembling this thing, like the book says, it's just not. It's not easy because this comes out, and when that comes out, it comes out of alignment. Okay, I'm on the wrong spline there. It comes out of alignment. And here we have one that has no groove, right here. And our snap ring opening, opening is gonna go right there, right here. So you gotta pay attention to that. All right, now let's do the wiggle wiggle with this thing, kind of center the frictions, align them, kind of sort of. Kind of sort of. There we go. And do the wiggle, 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 wiggle. All the way down. There we go. The wiggle is all the way down. Install our planet. Has a bearing on it. Our another hub with the uh, sun gear assembly. Actually, before we do that, let's install this. Because remember, about this tab so we're gonna look for the tab on the piston which is right here and you can't see it right but I can you have one on each side on the opposite ends and you're just gonna make sure it's a uh, non-rotational and it aligns itself on the piston itself and uh, now we install this hub steel uh oh Right here on the opposite ends, you have uh, two thick ones. So that's where you install it. Right here and right here. And there's a thick spray, uh, uh, pressure plate or a ply plate that goes in the back. 
Remember the thick ones? Remember where you put them at. And now we slide these frictions through the hub. We have the thick ones going in. They're on the opposite ends, but they, the, the steel does not go down if you don't align it the way it is. go next one up our pressure plate all right and our snap ring and it's the same thing here on this side on one of the thick ones it, it doesn't have a snap ring groove and you put the opening of the snap ring on that one this is going to uh, spline in that uh, planet where the fiber washer is. That's why we are assembling this thing like this. Now, if we flip this thing over, well, we're not going to do that now, but uh, let's go ahead and just get this uh, little section wiped off a little bit. It's a bunch of teeth from that friction over there. All right, let's go ahead and assemble this other drum. This other drum is just going to go on the bottom. As you can see, I don't think it was built because uh, it is quite dirty. No. And this fluid from, from these units, the eight speeds, is being redesigned a few times because... Uh, it causes, uh, they tried, I mean, uh, GM has tried to fix the, uh, the shutter issue on these things. And it's been gone through the drawing board a few times. And uh, this fluid kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of dirty, man. I mean, it kind of, whenever you put this parts on the, on the parts washer on the cooker, you know, the water gets kind of weird looking. Uh, so the spacer and the bearing, I mean, you, you can actually just put this drum in there and then wiggle this one on there. And I mean, it's no big deal. Or you can, uh, put this on the, on the hole on the bench and then put both together and then just flip it over and that's it. So we're going to flip it over like that. Make sure that the hub doesn't come out. Stick your uh, spacer first, all the way down. And then, and the bearing. Like so. All right. So, now I'm going to get you back on the transmission. We're going to install this drum. Hold it. Flip it up. And, uh, man, it's going to be kind of, it's going to be a challenge to try to film that. Because I have to get that on there and then flip the transmission, you know, right side up. And then install that drum. But, anyways, so it is what it is. All right, well, let me uh, reposition myself again, and we go from there. Okay, I got you guys on the side right now, and uh, I was going to wiggle wiggle this drum on the, on the other drum, but since the camera is there and it's just an awkward and bad position, I still need to take the pin off my, uh, my uh, where I have this thing at, uh, hanging. Uh, and it's going to be kind of awkward, you know, try to do a bunch of things at the same time. And without being, getting in the way, you know, uh, trying to do this right here. But here we go. So we have the bearing, the fiber washer behind it. We have this planet right there. It's already engaged. 
we have these splines right here that spline into the planet. Remember, these splines were bad on the other piece, and I had to pry the snapper, I mean, the, the, the planet out. And uh, you can see where it was rubbing too. The drum was rubbing on it as well. And uh, there's nothing wrong with this piece, and there's nothing wrong with the, the other planet. And oh, and actually, I forgot to mention that uh, the hard parts place, instead of selling the whole assembly they uh, gave us a new washer so uh, well, the guy that went and picked it up uh, the parts I mean they just gave him a washer a plastic washer you know the one that was melted uh, because this piece is good so uh, I mean they didn't gave him another one but anyways here we go so let's get those uh, muscles wa uh, warmed up and uh, get this piece and I know that I I have the camera kind of over way and uh, zoomed in, so I'm probably going to be, the parts look kind of big at first, but this is what you do, and I know I'm already on the way, so kind of like guide it on there, there we go, it's already on there, it's already engaged, already in, now what I can do now, and I, actually I'm going to, it's not going to be easy to wiggle it, wiggle this drum in there sideways, but we're going to try. Just for camera purposes only, I've never done it like this, but... Yeah, it's not going to, it's not going to work like this sideways, so... I'm not going to take it out because I might bring the other drum out. So, what I'm going to do... Oh, it's going in well I'm gonna leave it like that now I'm gonna take my pin off and it got a little bit heavy there we go put this thing right side up put you guys on hold right quick get you on up here all right guys <clears throat> uh, I took the drum out all right, we're going to install it now. We're just going to wiggle it all the way down there, like that. Make sure that it bottoms out. Now remember this, uh, well, I talked about this bearing, about the lip. The lip goes towards the spacer, and I position this like this, like so. Now we're going to install our, our stator support. Now, the front cover, we cannot install it until we install our valve body because uh, we need to install our pump. And see how he bottomed out? He bottomed out, and I think this guy was having an issue with this thing, either not bottoming out the, uh, the stator support like it is now, or the extension housing, depending on which way he was uh, assembling this unit. If he was following the manual, he was probably having a lot of issues. Uh, that's why I build my units or I assemble my unit this way. This hole right here is not completely round. That's our alignment pin because we have an alignment pin over here for our uh, front cover. And when you take the, to take the chain off, I forgot to mention this on the disassembly video, it has an end which is north and north goes up. So whenever you do that, uh, you have this uh, tab right here to disengage the gear from the uh, from the pump itself and the pumps on the valve body, and this goes over here down here. Uh, so you lift it up and see how it is uh, on the disengaged position. This slides in and off the valve body. So you pull it to the north side of it, uh, and that'll give you access to remove this gear, so you can remove the valve body itself. And if I remember correctly, when we disassembled this unit, uh, this thing just fell off. And I didn't have to do this. But I, ha I have it right now uh, like that because I took it off the valve body. Because I'm going to show you how to install this. So we installed the valve body first. And then we installed the pump gears with the chain. And then right now we're going to install the gasket. And the last part of it is going to be the front cover. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, get all of our bolts here. We 
reassemble this. What's this right here? Oh, this is assembly loop from the other guy. Okay, yeah. So I'm just gonna give this back to them. They can do whatever they want with it. Now we have a spare bolt because, oh, I forgot to mention that. I have the parking rod held by one bolt. Oh, you'll see right now. So this other bolt goes down there. All right, let's get our 13 millimeter socket. I'm not torquing anything on this one because I'm not expecting for them to install it. It's going to be their decision if they want to do that or not. Uh, but on the other unit, uh, we are going to uh, follow all those procedures. And hopefully I have enough time to uh, film that. And like I said, it's going to be a going down the road unit. Basically, that other unit is going to replace this one. They're going to use that valve body, but I'm going to install this valve body on it. I don't want any loose parts. I don't want to lose anything right now. I'm going to install their valve body, their new valve body on this thing, and have it completely assembled that nothing is missing. Because so they're going to keep it until I get the other unit in, and then we're going to put the uh, overhaul kit, which, which we call it paper rubber rings and seals on it. I'm going to inspect the frictions, make sure that all the frictions are good, whatever frictions are not good. Then uh, we need to order the, the frictions separate. And we go from there. And the reason we uh, want to install a paper roll rings and seal on that thing is because of this gasket and all the rubbers that are inside the drums. And this gasket has never been replaced, as you can see here is your original gasket so oh, drop it down the guide pin this is going to stay there for now that's why we put assembly lube or the blue goo uh, on it not the green goo not the gringo man just the blue goo uh, just to hold the gasket in place then we're going to install the pump and then we're going to install the, the front cover which the front cover is this right here he has threads on two, so you can use the uh, slide hammer to get it out. Or you can just uh, drive some bolts, long bolts, uh, with your speed handle or a ratchet and, uh, you know, get it out. All right, uh, let me put you guys on pause again. And uh, flip this thing over to install the valve body. And then uh, the last thing is going to be installing the chain. The change for the, excuse me, the change for the pump. The change for the pump. Alrighty. All right, so let's go ahead and install our valve body, but we're gonna do some air checking right now. And uh, I just checked the book and uh, now I had already installed this right here, but this goes right here. And we're gonna go ahead and start uh, air checking this. So this passage right here is the two, three, four, six, eight clutch. As you can you can hear it, and it applies very very solid. There is no leak whatsoever. The next passage here is one, three, five, six, seven. As you can see, it's very solid. And then the next one right here, four, five, six, seven, eight, reverse clutch. My, uh, this is what's leaking, not the, not the circuit. It applies really, really solid. And then we have this passage here is not listed as nothing. probably a breather and then this right here is to cooler cooler return 
No, this is not cooler return. This is cooler return. Comes out through here. So these two passages, they just they're just open to the case. Uh, this right here, it's the uh, one two seven eight reverse brake. It's gonna be leaking because uh, we have this extension here, and this is that center support, you know, that has a snap ring on it. These clutches were good. Uh, one two seven eight reverse brake. You can see right here they're compressing real good. This is going to be tricky because it's a square hole, uh, and these is are the ones that were bad, which is one, two, three, four, five reverse. So I was right on that. One, two, three, four, five reverse. That's what I had mentioned at first, and I told you guys not to quote me on that. So I have this big tip right here. So I'm going to kind of see if I can seal it a little bit. This goes through the back. And then on the extension housing is the piston that compresses this frictions. Let's go ahead and uh, apply them. It's squared, so I'm leaking on it. But right here, you can see it apply. So we're good on it. Everything applies very, very solid. If it wasn't because of that bearing, this transmission could be used as is with no issues with the brand new valve body. Uh, now, let's go ahead and install the valve body. Now this right here, I just have it holding right here, this parking rod, because when I put it in the cooker, you know, it's rotating. I didn't want this to get bent and it's out of the way. Uh, you have to remove this to remove the extension housing. Otherwise the parking pole will be, uh, will be against it. Uh, let me get a, some pliers to turn that or a screwdriver to turn this and get it engaged there we go now we get it engaged we get it close to the parking uh, to where the parking is because we want to install this and the good thing is that it, it springs out now let's go ahead and install this mechanism here I'm gonna push the uh, parking rod, align my bolts, align my bolts down, so we got one bolt aligned, and now we're going to get the extra bolt that we got left over from the front, that it's the same as the front cover, we're going to move the linkage out of the way and install the other bolt. Okay, so now we have our uh, parking mechanism installed. Now let's go ahead and uh, drop our uh, speed sensors. Get our speed sensors uh, installed. We have our connector here that connects our speed sensor. We have, this goes here. This tab goes here. We have both of our speed sensors. Remember how we backed out the bolts? And uh, now we're gonna back them out to push the speed sensors up or down. So we got, now that I have, I backed up my bolts, the speed sensors are all the way down. Let's go ahead and uh, snug them up slowly. And I'm, I'm pushing on it just to make sure that it's seated properly. There we go. Let's get my socket out of the way there. And now the front one, I need to back up that bolt, back it out. There we go, it's backed out. Align it. See, I got the bolt all the way out. Now I gotta align this uh, tab right there on that hole that aligns it. And there goes that little plastic that I was talking about that holds that, uh, that little rubber. It holds the bolt so that the bolts won't fall off. And there we go. And let's go ahead and attach 
this right here. So we have our harness already attached to it. And this is the main harness. Uh, you just wiggle it to the side. The manual valve, we're gonna worry about that later. You know, yeah, it's just installed easy. But we're gonna go ahead and install this right here. And just have it there, you know, ready for it. You know. Now let's go ahead and uh, get our valve body. It has fluid in it. Brain sensor up. Make sure that we have nothing in the way. It's already air checked. Then we're, I'm going to move you guys on the front. Or actually, I'm just going to put the bell housing to the top. And then so you can uh, look down. And we're going to go ahead and install our front cover and our chain to it. Our pump chain. Uh, I might do it sideways like this because the valve body has some fluid. So it has some alignment tabs and as you can see it's already aligned. Let's go ahead and uh, connect our harness. Now the ones that have the start stop feature it has an ele electronic pump over here with the connector on the side and uh, it's a little different. The harness is different from the start stop. You know, when it comes to the stop, the engine shuts off and you have an auxiliary uh, transmission fluid pump that's uh, electrical. So it, it, it's an electrical pump instead of the hydraulic pump like this one right here. And uh, as a matter of fact, I just noticed something. This valve body is missing the chain cover. It takes a plastic cover here that's bolted up with two bolts. I just noticed this right now. Yeah, it's missing that. I'll let them know that they have to put it on there, otherwise the fluid is going to be splashed all over the place. Uh, okay, so now that we have our all of our uh, we have our valve body lined up, let's go ahead and get all of our bolts out. I should have done this before I started filming it. We're going to get this two sizes, long and short. I'm going to get all of my long bolts first. Get that chain out of the way. All right, so we get all the long bolts first. One, two, three, four, five. Where you go, right here, underneath here, six and seven. All right, let's get all the small short bolts. We got one over here. We got two, we got three, and we got four, one down here. All right, let's go ahead and uh, slowly. This valve body is going to be removed and installed on the other unit anyways. Okay, one more. We got our temperature sensor, our harness, and all of our solenoids. Now let's go ahead and install our uh, manual valve on it. So we align, we'll align it to engage, pull the spring back. It's always harder when you try to uh, show somebody how to do it and try to keep yourself all out of the way. Yeah, I'm trying to peel the spring back and then get myself out of the way so that the camera can pick it up. But it's probably not going to be that easy. Not possible so I have to rotate the manual valve get it in position there we go now I have the the spring is, is still peeled back and we're gonna go over it so there we go installed now we get our eight millimeter socket which this one actually 
Oh, and we have to the detent roller. It holds the manual, the, the transmission rain sensor, and then it has a guide back here. And actually, this socket, the same socket, well, it doesn't work. It works on the seven millimeter ones. So let's go ahead and get our eight millimeter socket. There we go. All right, let me get this. Uh, I hope we don't make a mess with the. Uh, the fluid that this valve body has flip it up and install our chain or I'll figure another way we can do it sideways here I mean I can do that as well we just got to get we just got to get a latch stand and then install our cover all right let me let me see what I can do and set you guys up all our connections are good oh the locking tab push the locking tab there we go Everything looks good. The filter goes next in the valve body. I mean the, the pan. But we're going to go ahead and install our uh, chain uh, for our chain driven pump. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and install our pump chain. Our pump chain. Here's our uh, pump uh, drive gear. And it has uh, uh, some id tabs he's got four of them on one side well he's got uh eight on one on one side and then he has nine on the other side and uh the one that has the extra dot on it goes towards you and you have this washer the plastic washer right here and that goes just like that but what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna i'm gonna put some uh, assembly lube on that ceiling ring here and uh, just lube it up and I'm gonna drop the uh, I don't want I don't want anything on the bench here install everything that's the uh, turbine shaft seal here's our pump uh, drive gear we have our driven gear, the north, remember the north. Uh, this goes towards the front of the bell housing, which is the north of the transmission, which is the front of it. This goes towards the valve body side of it. Let's go ahead and... Uh, now that this transmission is, is, is facing up like this, it's going to be a little bit, a little bit tricky but we will manage to install it so here is our pump right here this is our drive shaft for our pump we're going to lower it like that engage it on both sides now it fell over here that's why it's kind of tricky. It's easier when it's it's sideways after you install the valve body and you have to uh, all right so we are completely engaged now the the drive gear aligns itself on the cover so we're gonna drop drop it where it aligns itself and we're going to align its uh, our uh, driven gear now we have our north. Our north goes towards the bell housing. I mean, towards the engine, in other words. And now we are going to, we are unlatched. We're going to rotate it. And we are going to pull. Actually, when, when, when you have it like that, uh, uh, I just push through the other side. But you can actually get a pick and just uh, pull on the tab right here. Get a pick, pull on the tab, and pull down, and it engages, and now this gear will not come, come loose. It's already attached to the valve body. And we have a little bit of play, but, I mean, once the torque converter is on there, it aligns itself. We have a lining gear right here. I put our turbine shaft seal. Everything's lubricated. The, the, the case is lubricated as well. Now we have our cover, our 
front cover. And we're going to align it. I'm going to install all the bolts and I'm going to use the speed handle to drive it down so I can get it nice and, uh, and straight. They're all 10 millimeter bolts. They have a uh, red Loctite on them from, from the factory. I'm going to go ahead and drop them there and then get the speed handle and the 10 millimeter socket. And just start lining it down. Make sure it goes in straight. Now we're all the way down. Let's go ahead and get all the rest of them on. Then I'm going to flip it over. We're going to install the filter and the pan. Just like I mentioned, I mean, this is the, the way I do it. It's, it's simple for me to do it this way. You know, assemble it all through the through the barrel barrel of the case through the front instead of doing it how the book calls for. It's just different. Now these are torque to yield bolts, so I'm using my speed handle just to uh, calculate the threads. I don't want to strip anything. I don't want to damage this transmission, but once we get the other one in, we're going to torque everything the way it's supposed to be. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. And yeah, it did uh, leak transmission fluid, the valve body leak transmission fluid on my floor, but I got some chop towels on there, but anyways. I'll flip it over, install the pan, and we're done with it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and finish with this thing. The next part is the filter. The filter has a spring, and it's, uh, it'll spring load itself against the transmission pan. And remember, this thing needs, it still needs the, uh, the pump chain uh, cover. It's a plastic cover that's attached with two bolts. Got to install that. I don't have it, uh, but it should come on the other unit. Once we get the other unit, we'll look at it. This is a reusable pan gasket. Uh, it should come also on your overhaul kit. Uh, and it has some alignment uh, tabs. The large tabs go towards the case. The large tabs go toward the case and the small tabs go towards the, the transmission itself. So there we go, it is aligned. And this is our transmission pan. Now the transmission pan has a, this bolt right here, this is not a drain bolt. You do not drain the transmission through here. This is actually the fluid level on this transmission. It has a hole on the side over here where you fill it up and it has a plug, but the plug is not on here. Uh, they kept the plug. Uh, but you fill it through the side. Once the fluid starts coming out of here uh, with the engine running and up to temperature, then your transmission is full. And it does have, this is magnetic. It does have a magnet here and it does have two magnets on the rear, on the, on the rear of, the, of the transmission itself. So now we align it on the gasket. It should come out and it's spring loaded. It's spring loaded on the filter itself. All right, so that's it. I mean, just uh, install the, all the bolts, tighten it up. And this has been a disassembly inspection and reassembly of a 8L90 transmission that's on a 2018 uh, Chevrolet Silverado 
And yes, you see, uh, we see this with low miles. Actually, the dealer, the dealership, uh, under warranty, they've worked on these units. So uh, I know that people still think that, and they have the mentality that it only has 40,000 miles or 20,000 miles and you know, it has to be a solenoid or it has to be this or it has to be that. And sometimes, unfortunately, all the new technology is new technology like this. The 10 speed is also new technology. And as always, new technology has its flaws. And through the years, they start, the engineers, they go back to the drawing board and they start making changes. This eight speeds only came out just a few years after the 6L80s and 6L90s or 6L45s. 6L45s, 80s and 90s, they have a good track record, but they still do have a lot of issues with the, the engineering on the torque converters causing transmission damage. This is the same thing. Engineering issues with the torque converter that shutters and the fluid itself and the friction material that this transmission uses. Anyways, we're done. We're done with this. I hope that you enjoyed uh, this video here and it's just for information purposes only. And you can do whatever you want uh, on your transmission. You can use this as a guide just to re uh, disassemble and reassemble. I did not cover the rebuild process on the uh, uh, applied components, which are the drums. Uh, this transmission has no band, it's clutch to clutch. Uh, and once we get the other one, if I get some time, uh, we'll do the installation video or the, re or the, the rebuild video of the uh, drive components, the applied components. All the clutches and drums and every good little thing that this thing has in it. And uh, this is Hiram and I hope you guys enjoyed it and have a great day. See y'all guys later.